Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, sorry about background noise if you hear any wind blowing, rain raining, it's uh, one of those days, you know. Today I'm going to be looking again at my new Kuretake Art Nouveau set of paints which arrived yesterday and which is giving me great pleasure. Um, and we're going to experiment and see what we can do with it today. I also have come across something which you might not have heard of, which is this thing called reverse colouring books. Now, that's a mystery. Um, what a reverse colouring book is, in case you haven't heard of it, um, is a book with a whole bunch of um, pages which are like this, really, this kind of thing. Really, really loose um, paintings. I think this whole idea came out of somebody having a stack like this of paintings that they've done. This is a very good example, something like that. And then the idea is you go in there and you put the finishing touches to the painting. So it could be anything from something like this to something more structured like that. That's your page inside the book. And then you come in either with more paint or more likely with um, colored uh, felt tips, brush, pens, liners, you know, fine liners or whatever takes your fancy, you can um, finish it off. And I thought to myself, well, in the light of my attempt to balance creativity and consumption, why wouldn't we make our own reverse colouring pages for our own reverse colouring book? And these paints would be absolutely ideal for that, wouldn't they? So here I've got a little stack of paper. This is basically sulphite paper. It's very um, inexpensive. This is basically like, sorry to use that word twice in one sentence, uh, it's like heavy copy paper. It's the sort of stuff you put through your copy machine. Um, these were um, large sheets, I've cut them in half, and I'm going to paint on these and I'm going to do a few um, as quickly as I possibly can uh, with whatever comes to mind using my new set and uh, we'll see if we can't produce something which is worth painting on top of. I mentioned in the other video that we did about this set here that um, we've got these kind of coordinating rows of colours here where all of these pinks, they could kind of go together and this would go together and this would go together and so on. Or you could go for this and I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start with those colours there and uh, we're going to just use lots of water. I don't need to wet these um, first because uh, they pick up really quickly. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to dance across the paper with my paint in colors of a green hue, Huey Green. Remember him, Huey Green? What was it? Now, was he um, double your money and take it away? Or was he um, the other one? He was Canadian. I bet somebody out there remembers Huey Green. Ah, Sunday night at the London Palladium. Yes, all of that. The Tiller girls. So we're just dashing colour in here, like there was no tomorrow, because there is no tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. So you don't have to do it this way. You could be much more um, restrained and you could take your time 
and I'm I'm not. I'm going to just I don't know. You have to do whatever. I'll tell you what I think is a good idea. Um, a lot of people say I've got this really good paper and I don't know anything about watercolour and where do I start on my really good paper? And I would say you don't, right? What you do is you get yourself some sulphite paper or some Canson XL if you want to be a little bit more professional about it. XL is for students. And you do this and you do half a dozen of these. And then when you've done that, then you break out your better quality paper. But honestly, I don't think it's a good idea to use Archie's watercolour paper when you're a beginner. And I know that there are lots of tutors out there who would totally disagree with me. That's your prerogative. Um, I think you can learn to paint on the cheapest paper. You could paint on the back of a cornflakes box. And I think copy paper is actually very, very liberating. I'm going to get excited and my blood pressure is going to go up. No, keep calm, keep calm. Keep calm and think of England. There we are. That's page number one. That is my first background. And I'm going to let that dry and then be careful with it because it's a little bit delicate when it's wet, this paper. And we'll just put that over here and it can dry. Make a nice background. And page number two. I'm going to do some roses now on this one. We'll pick up some pink. And some more pink. This cat's tongue brush um, from Zen Art, it's, it's rather nice for painting roses, I find. Just keep them really loose and dash them onto the paper. Don't worry about keeping them under control because why do they need to be under control? Are you under control? Am I? I don't know. There we go. And then we want some leaves, probably. This brush is great for doing nice, big, chunky leaves. We've got a little bit of green in there. bit of green down here. Speed painting you could call this, couldn't you? And you'll explore and you'll say, oh yes, yeah I really like, don't like, do like, this, that and the other. Just keep it moving. Makes me think of, um, do you remember that program that used to be on about cookery? What was it called? Um, Oh, God. <laughs> the one that that chap... Oh, cancel this. I can't think of anybody's names. Um, and I'll come back after I've had my break. I'll, I'll start it up again. What was it called? What was it called? Ready, Steady, Cook. Ready, Steady, Cook. Yes. I've forgotten his name, but Ready, Steady, Cook. And they would give you things like an avocado, a lemon... Um, a piece of goat's cheese and uh, a slice of parma ham and say, make a meal out of this. And you would go, oh. And then they would. There we go. And put some more pink in. And then I think probably we need a few just a few stems, not too much because that's what you're supposed to put in when you come in and do the rest of it. So there we are, so that's number two. You can go and live over there. Number three. Um, let's have some stems and then maybe some green leaves. And once we've got these leaves in, the 
The idea of these backgrounds is that they should be open to interpretation. So we're going to pick up some reasonably bright colours for some flowers up here. Browns, I think. Why not? You could almost see these as kind of um, chrysanthemums. Yes. Anyone can do this. This is not hard and a very, very good way to start learning to paint, I think. You're not trying to make it look like anything. I put a little bit more orange down here. There we go. Right, I'm going to dry those off and then we'll finish one. Okay, so here we are. Here are the three. I've dried them now and they're a little bit crinkly, a little bit uh, cockled up, but you can iron them. Just put them on the ironing board with an iron on the medium heat and you can get them to go nice and flat. So this one's been ironed and it goes perfectly flat and you can definitely work on top of that. So I will do that to these. And if you wanted to use these as... Um, journal fodder. They would make perfect pages for inside your 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 um, journal or even a journal that you're not making but just filling. They're absolutely fantastic and the paper is very very friendly to these paints. So all of these, these are actually two different kinds of paper I think. One of this one feels a little bit thicker. All of these can be worked over with pen now or brush pens or whatever you want to do. Um, as can indeed this one, which is the one I've done earlier, which I have ironed. And um, I could do the same thing to this one as well. And the idea is um, you, can, you can do something like this, sort of line work over the top, or you can try to look for shapes in the design. So, um, or if it's one like this, which is a little bit more structured, you can go around it and sort of emphasize the flowers that you can see already starting to come out there. So there's different ways that you can use them and it's up to you. Your imagination is the only thing that's going to limit you on, on this one. And at the moment, I'm just trying to make my mind up as to, to which way to go. But I think, I think, I think, what do I think? What do I think? I think, I don't know. Um, I think I might do um, something with a... A uh, Kuretake brush pen, if I can find one. This is said item. Um, it's a Tombow brush pen. I think it's black. Let's see if it works. One of the ones that I've killed. Yes, that seems to be okay. Um, right, so let's have a go at this. I think... I quite like the idea of these um, breaking something with a line like this. And then I love these brushes because you get these wonderful thick and thin lines, which are so elegant. And uh, it's just fun. Press down and release. Keep them different sizes. Make them go at different angles. Press and release, press and release, press and release. There we are, so that's 
motif number one, and we could then just bring something up here like this, broad and narrow, press and release. And then we might do some little sort of buds, buds or flowers or something on the ends here. Okay, and um, we could put some some nice open leaves here. We can give them veins. Nice brush, uh, nice pen because, like I say, it gives you broad lines and if you want narrow lines, you can have narrow lines too. And then once you've done these shapes, you can go to your paintbrush and you can pick up a colour, for example, mauve. And I do believe that you can paint onto the leaves. like this, in a not altogether regular way. Could do it here too, if you want. It doesn't run. And then you could also embellish there, like that. And if the, don't worry about the paper bending again, because you can always iron it again. Okay, so let me see what other kinds of doodly woodlies can we do. Um, another one of these, something like this. Very important to find things to do which calm the mind, keep the blood pressure down so you don't have to take those horrible pills that make you feel lousy. I'm trying to get off my blood pressure pills. I don't want to take them, so. And reducing and trying to find other things instead. And we can do what? Nice circles on these ones. We could have some flowers. to dip your pen into the water. I don't want 
do that, do we? How about some leaves that are this kind of shape? The nice thing about working on this paper is that it's smooth and it takes the brush pen really well. You haven't got to worry about it skipping across the roughness of the watercolour paper. If you see what I mean. Let's put another one of these flowers in the middle here. Looks very unpromising. Do a little bit of pink on there too. Why not? Um, let us have a branch coming down here and let's have multiple stems coming out and then little leaves on each one. You can do them like that if you want. Oops. <laughs> and then we could have some little circles. And the, this is all about just building something up, you know? Building something up. We need another one of those flowers over here, I think. Get the stem. And you see where we're going? Yeah, so we probably could stop there, could do, um, could do a lot more, really. We could have, oh, I have another one of these flowers. I'm quite fond of these flowers now. And then a few more of them, single ones, not double. If you haven't got one of these pens, I do recommend them. We bought these when we were in Spain a couple of years ago to learn calligraphy and um, didn't ever get round to doing the calligraphy, really. I'm not very good at that. Tamsin's much better than me at calligraphy. Uh, but yes, they're, they're super, really good. Okay, well, there we are. That's that then. And I think you get the gist, get the sense of where I'm headed. And um, this was the one I did earlier. And we've got these ones here to work on next. I shall put them in the um, ironing pile and um, see how they turn out when they're painted on as well. And I've got a big pile somewhere. What did I do with them? A big pile as I went through. This is everything I've done in the last two days. So, you know, some of these are quite nice. All on cheap, 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 cheap paper. All with these paints. And uh, yeah, a lot of fun. You can cut them up, make them into bookmarks, use them to line uh, drawers with, use them to wrap parcels, make some nice wrapping paper, at least not, want not. Who hasn't got a drawer of copy paper that they don't use anymore? Because we used to have photocopiers on the go all the time, didn't we? But now we just send emails. We don't have to write letters and print them out anymore. We just send emails. So we've all got copy paper sitting around. Let's use it, guys. So, I will let you go and um, links in the description below uh, the video of the various different products that we've been using here. 
and um, have fun, enjoy, play. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.